Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Tonight's game is brought to you by TCGPlayer.com, where you can find all of your cards online while still supporting local game stores, Dragon Shield for all the best accessories to protect your decks, and through Patreon, where you get awesome benefits for your direct support. For tonight's game, we are showcasing two games from one of our latest recording sessions. Ever wanted to go behind the scenes and watch us record? Consider signing up to our Patreon today and get instant access to our Discord where we live stream our recordings. We are also hosting a CEDH webcam tournament on our Discord on May 15th. We are going to be giving away a Mana Crypt as our grand prize. All Patreons at all tiers qualify, so sign up today and join the tournament. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Mike piloting Najila the Blade Blossom. This is a mid-range deck that looks to interact with its opponents, apply pressure with Najila, and then find one of the one-card combos with Najila to win the game. His opening hand contains an Arid Mesa, Overgrown Tomb, Fierce Guardianship, Demonic Tutor, Deathrite Shaman, Avacyn's Pilgrim, and a Utopia Sprawl. Next, we have Zack piloting Kaikar Wind's Fury. This is a proactive deck that looks to capitalize on Kaikar's abilities and win with a number of different storm-based combos. His opening hand contains a Command Tower, Steam Vents, Brainstorm, Azorius Signet, Mental Misstep, Phantasmal Image, and a Goblin Bombardment. After that we have Noah piloting the Gitrog Monster. This is a very unique proactive deck that is based around the land synergy and dredge mechanics. It has a lot of different lines to finish the game and is arguably the most complicated deck in the format. His opening hand contains a Priest of Titania, Land of War Elves, Finehorn Elves, Dark Ritual, Forest, Polluted Delta, and a Cabal Pit. Finally, we have Folger piloting Yison the Wanderer Bard. This is a mid-range deck that looks to stack out the early game and then break parity with Yison's ability. His opening hand contains an Elvish Mystic, Scavenging Ooze, Trinisphere, two Snow-Covered Forests, Gaius Cradle, and his London Mulligan is an Arbor Elf. Without further ado, let's begin this jaded, jeering, jazzy, jarring jig of joy. Noah wins the Virtual Rock, Paper, Scissors Championship and gets to start us off. Noah draws a card for turn and plays a Forest. He casts a Finehorn Elves. He passes the turn. Folger draws a card for turn and plays a snow-covered forest. He casts an Elvish Mystic. Folger passes. Mike draws a card for turn and plays an overgrown tomb into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Deathrite Shaman. He ends the turn. Zack draws a card for turn and plays a command tower. He ships the turn to Noah. Noah draws and plays a Cabal Pit. He taps Cabal Pit to cast Dark Ritual. In response, Zack pays two life to cast Mental Misstep, countering the Dark Ritual. Noah casts a Priest of Titania and passes. Folger draws and casts Scavenging Ooze. He plays a Guy's Cradle. He casts Lignify, targeting Priest of Titania. Noah groans, and Folger passes the turn. Mike draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He casts Utopia Sprawl on his Taiga, naming blue. He activates Deathrite Shaman, exiling Bloodstained Mire, and making a black mana. He casts his commander, Najila the Blade Blossom. Mike ends his turn. At the end of Mike's turn, Zack casts Brainstorm. He draws three and puts two back on top. Zack draws and plays a Steam Vents into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Chrome Mox and printing Preordain. He casts a Rhystic Study. He passes. Noah draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He casts a Land War Elves, paying for Rhystic Study. He ends the turn. Folger draws and plays a Snow Covered Forest. He casts a Trinosphere, paying for Rhystic Study as well. He passes to Mike. Mike draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He moves the combat and attacks Zack with Najila. Najila triggers and Mike creates a Warrior tapped and attacking Zack. Zack takes it, and in his second main phase, Mike casts Demonic Tutor, paying for Rhystic Study. He fetches up a card into his hand, and passes. Zack draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Kaikar Wind's Fury. To the sound of a lot of obnoxious bird noises, Zack ends his turn. Noah draws and plays a Phyrexian Tower. He activates Phyrexian Tower, sacrificing his Priest of Titania and making two black mana. He casts his commander, the Gitrog Monster, tapping Cabal Pit to pay for Rhystic Study. He passes. At the end of Noah's turn, Folger activates Scavenging Ooze and exiles Bloodstained Mire from Zack's graveyard. Folger draws and plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He casts his commander, Yison the Wanderer Bard, paying for Rhystic Study. He passes to Mike. Mike draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He casts Derevi, Imperial Tactician. Rhystic Study triggers and Zack draws. Derevi enters and taps down Kaikar. Mike moves to combat and attacks Zack with everything. Najila triggers and Mike creates two warriors tapped and attacking Zack. Zack takes the hit and Derevi triggers. Mike untaps his lands and then activates Najila. He repeats this process, making exponentially more warriors and combat steps. He attacks his opponents with infinite combats and warriors and wins the game.
In this game, Folger returns with Yeast on the Wanderer Bard. His opening hand contains a Regal Force, Llanowar Elves, Secure Tribe Scout, three snow-covered forests, and an ancient tomb. Next, we have Mike, bringing back Najila the Blade Blossom. His opening hand contains an Opposition Agent, Dranith Magistrate, Mana Crypt, Mystic Remora, Bloodstained Mire, Mana Confluence, and an Arid Mesa. After that, we have Zack, returning with Kaikar, Wind's Fury. His opening hand, which has no lands, contains a Soul Ring, Falwar Stone, Ristic Study, Preordain, Mana Drain, Force of Negation, and his London Mulligan is a Jessica's Will. Finally, we have Noah bringing back the Gitrog Monster. His opening hand contains a Command Beacon, Overgrowth Stadium, Allosaurus Shepherd, Calling the Weak, Birds of Paradise, Priest of Titania, and his London Mulligan is an Autumn's Veil. Folger wins the PB and J Eating Contest and gets to start us off. Folger draws for turn and plays a Snow Covered Forest. He casts a Secure Tribe Scout. He passes. Mike draws for turn and plays a Mana Confluence. He casts a Mana Crypt. He taps Mana Confluence to cast his commander, Najila the Blade Blossom. He passes to Zack. Zack draws a card for turn, ripping a land off of the top. Never punished. He plays a Plateau. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts a Felwar Stone. He casts Preordain. He scries two and then draws a card. Feeling pretty good about his opening hand now, Zack ships the turn. Noah draws a card per turn and plays an Undergrowth Stadium. He casts Birds of Paradise. He passes. Folger draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps Ancient Tomb to cast his commander, Yison the Wanderer Bard. He passes to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He moves to combat and attacks Noah with Najila. Ninjila triggers and creates a warrior token tapped in attacking Noah. Noah takes it, and in his second main phase, Mike casts a Mystic Remora. In response, Zack casts Force of Negation, exiling Phantasmal Image from his hand, targeting Mystic Remora. Mike responds by casting Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, countering the Force of Negation. With Remora still on the stack, Folger activates Secure Tribe Scout and puts a Snow-Covered Forest into play. He casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing a Snow-Covered Forest as an additional cost. In response, Mike taps Mana Confluence and flashes in Opposition Agent. Folger sighs, and Mike chuckles. Mike takes control of Folger, looking at Folger's hand, and then searching Folger's library for a Gaia's Cradle into exile. Mr. Gamora finally resolves, and then Mike passes the turn. Zack draws and casts Ristic Study. Remora triggers, and Mike draws. Zack passes to Noah. Noah draws and plays a Command Beacon. He casts Calling the Weak, sacrificing Birds of Paradise. Remora and Ristic trigger, and Mike and Zack draw. Noah makes 4 black mana and casts his commander, the Gitrog monster, paying for Ristic Study. Noah ships the turn to Folger. Folger draws and plays a snow-covered forest. He casts Atlanta War Elves. Ristic triggers and Zack draws. Folger passes. During his upkeep, Mike loses his mana crypt flip and takes 3 damage. He pays for Mystic Remora. He draws and plays a Tundra. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Najila, the Warrior Token, and Opposition Agent. Najila triggers and creates 2 warriors tapped and attacking Zack. Zack takes the hit and in his second main phase, Mike casts Dranith Magistrate. Ristic triggers, and Zack draws. Mike passes the turn. Zack draws and plays a Training Center. He passes. During his upkeep, the Gitrog monster triggers, and Noah sacrifices Command Beacon. Gitrog triggers again, and Noah draws. He draws for turn, and plays an Ancient Tomb. He plays a Cavern of Souls through the Gitrog monster. It enters, and Noah names Elves. He taps Ancient Tomb to cast Priest of Titania, paying for Ristic Study. Noah passes to Folger. At the end of Noah's turn, Folger casts Beast Within, targeting Opposition Agent. Remora and Ristic trigger, and Zack and Mike draw. Opposition Agent dies, and Mike creates a 3-3 Beast. Folger draws and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes 3 damage. He pays for Mystic Remora. He draws and plays a Command Tower. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Najila, 3 Warriors, and a Beast. Najila triggers, and Mike creates 4 Warriors tapped in attacking Zack. Zack takes it, and Mike ends the turn. Zack draws and plays a Sea of Clouds. He casts an Arcane Signet. Remora triggers, and Mike draws. Zack ships the turn. During his upkeep, the Gitrog monster triggers, and Noah sacrifices Cavern of Souls. Gitrog triggers again, and Noah draws. He draws for turn, and casts a Squandered Resources. Remora and Ristic trigger, and Mike and Zack draw. He activates Squandered Resources, sacrificing Undergrowth Stadium for a black, and then triggers the Gitrog monster. He draws from Gitrog, and then plays a City of Brass. He casts Imperial Seal, tapping Ancient Tomb to pay for Ristic. Mystic triggers, and Mike draws. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses 2 life. Noah activates Squandered Resources, sacrificing Ancient Tomb for a colorless mana and triggering the Gitrog monster. He draws, and then casts an Allosaurus Shepherd, paying for Ristic Study. He taps the City of Brass to cast Noose Constrictor. 
Bristic triggers, and with it on the stack, Zack casts Mystical Tutor, Remora triggers, and Mike draws. Zack fetches up a Swords to Plowshares onto the top of his library. Noah activates Squandered Resources and sacrifices City of Brass to pay for Ristic Study. With Noose Constrictor on the stack, Mike casts Veil of Summer, attempting to draw interaction. Ristic triggers, and Zack draws. Veil resolves, and Mike draws. Zack casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting the Gitrog monster. Remora triggers, and with it on the stack, Mike pays two life to cast Noxious Revival, targeting Opposition Agent in his graveyard. In response, Folger activates Yisan. He puts the first verse counter on Yisan and fetches up a Quirion Ranger onto the battlefield. He activates Quirion Ranger, returning a snow covered forest to his hand and untapping Yisan. He activates Secure Tribe Scout to put a snow covered forest into play. He casts Worldly Tutor, tapping Ancient Tomb to pay for Ristic. Folger fetches up an Eternal Witness onto the top of his library. Noxious Revival then resolves, and Mike puts the Opposition Agent onto the top of his own library. Remora's Trigger resolves, and Mike draws. Swords to Plowshares exiles the Gitrog monster, and then Noah gains 6 life. Finally, News Constrictor resolves. Noah resigns himself to his fate and passes the turn. At the end of Noah's turn, Mike taps Mana Confluence to flash in an Opposition Agent. Ristic triggers, and Zack draws. Agent resolves, and the turn moves to Folger. Folger draws, and then taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Eternal Witness. Ristic triggers, and Zack draws. Eternal Witness enters, and Folger returns Beast Within from his graveyard to his hand. He taps Llanowar Elves for green and activates Quarian Ranger, returning a snow-covered forest to his hand and untapping Llanowar Elves. He plays a snow-covered forest. He casts Sylvan Library. Ristic and Remora trigger, and Zack and Mike draw. Folger passes. During his upkeep, Mike wins his Mana Crypt flip. He lets his Mystic Remora die. He draws and casts an Imperial Seal, paying for Ristic study. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses 2 life. He pays 2 life and casts a taxi and probe targeting Zack, paying for Ristic. Mike looks at Zack's hand and draws a card. He plays a Tropical Island. He moves to combat. Before attackers are declared, Folger taps Llanowar Elves for green, activates Quarian Ranger returning a forest to his hand, and then untapping his Llanowar Elves. He activates Secure Tribe Scout and puts a snow-covered forest into play. He casts Beast Within, targeting Najila and paying for Ristic Study. In response, Mike casts Deflecting Swat, targeting Beast Within. He attempts to politic with Zack to let this resolve. Zack scoffs immediately and in response, casts Mana Drain, targeting Deflecting Swat. Mike responds by casting Red Elemental Blast, targeting Mana Drain and paying for Ristic Study. Zack responds by casting Dispel, targeting Red Elemental Blast. Dispel counters Blast, Mana Drain counters Deflecting Swat, Beast Within destroys Najila, and then Mike creates a 3-3 Beast. Mike attacks Folger with a Beast and 7 Warriors. Folger blocks a warrior with Yisan and takes the rest. Mike ships the turn to Zack. Zack draws and adds three colorless mana from his mana drain. He casts an Azorius Signet. He taps his rocks to float mana and cast Dramatic Reversal. He untaps all of his non-land permanents and then casts Elsha of the Infinite. He plays a Polluted Delta. He looks at the top card of his library. He cracks his Polluted Delta, pays a life, and Mike fetches up a Volcanic Island into exile. Zack looks at the top card of his library and goes to cast it but both Folger and Mike remind him of the Draneth Magistrate on the battlefield. Zack sighs and then lets his mana fade and passes the turn. Noah draws and plays a Swamp. He casts Elvish Mystic, paying for Ristic Study. Noah ends his turn. During his draw step, Folger draws two extra from Sylvan Library. He puts two cards back on top. He plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He taps Llanowar Elves, activates Quirion Ranger, returning a Snow-Covered Forest to his hand and untapping Llanowar Elves. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Regal Force. Ristic triggers and Zack draws. It resolves, and Folger draws 6 cards. He activates Secure Tribe Scout and puts a Snow-Covered Forest into play. He passes to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays Folger's Gaius Cradle from Exile. He recasts his commander, Najila the Blade Blossom, paying for Ristic Study. He casts Gilded Drake, paying for Ristic Study again. It enters, and Mike exchanges control of Gilded Drake with Allosaurus Shepherd. He casts Derevi, Imperial Tactician, paying for Ristic. Derevi enters and taps down Elsha. He taps Mana Confluence and casts Neoform, sacrificing Allosaurus Shepherd. He fetches up a Dockside Extortionist onto the battlefield. It triggers and Mike creates 7 treasures. He moves to combat and attacks Zack, creating warriors with Najila, untapping lands with Derevi, and then activating Najila for infinite combats to win the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a great set of games. Congratulations to Mike on both of his wins. Najila is incredibly strong and applies so much pressure to the board. In game one, the Trinisphere only really to help protect Mike's win. 
In Game 2, Mike's opener was too much for the table to overcome, and he was able to snowball the rest of the game. The most valuable card goes to Najila, the Blade Blossom. Her ability to apply pressure, be available in the command zone, cost only 3, be your win con, and give you 5 colors is unmatched. She needs to be answered immediately in all games before she gets out of control. We are working on all kinds of new content, but we need your help. This content we make takes time and money to produce. Support from viewers like you is what enables us to bring this to the world. If you want to help out, consider signing up to Patreon, buying some merchandise at our store, or purchase cards from the TCG player links in the description. All of these help us bring this content to you, and you get awesome merchandise, cards at great prices, and cool Patreon perks. If you cannot help financially, liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and sharing these videos goes such a long way as well. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. All right, time for Patreon shoutouts. I'd like to give a shout out to J Rock, Wyon, Spielrahu, Sparks, Zods, Dylan Becker, Philip Hickey, Sanguino Lency, Matt Wingrove, Snarps the Klept, Fur Berglund, uh, Rakeko, Nick, Dante, CZ, Baby Jeebus, Pyro, Trey Payne, Dark, Delph Driz, Noah Saldana, and Brad Tobin. Thanks a lot, everyone. Really appreciate it.